But I definitely think by just sitting down with a guy and, you know, telling him it's okay, you're great, and trying to change his perspective in the situation, it helps some people, but the majority, I think, of men need to go out there and say, I need to I need to feel the burn, I need to feel the pain, I need to feel rejection, mm -hmm. I need to feel that and numb myself to it, literally mm -hmm. numb yourself to it, and then start putting into practice these these lines, these skills, these techniques. Hey guys, welcome to the Emily and Todd podcast. Today we have a very special guest. It's Kezia Noble. She has over 400,000 subscribers on YouTube where she gives dating advice and relationship advice to men. Um, Kezia, if you'd like to do an intro of yourself. Hi, uh, yep, Kezia Noble. Uh, I've been helping men increase their success rate with women since 2006. Um, I help guys uh, overcome approach anxiety. I help them with the actual approach itself, having more impactful, connective interactions with women, uh, sexual escalation, flirting, get out of the friend zone, basically everything. But I don't tend to give relationship advice. That's the one thing that I felt like if I did, it'd be like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'm, and I've been, like I said, I've been doing this since 2006, I have my own team, mm -hmm. um, have a published book, a uh, popular YouTube channel, and we run courses, and I have also online training products. Mm -hmm. Well, we're really excited to have you here. Um, just to tell you a little bit about us, we're a fairly new podcast, but I'm Emily, and I have a TikTok following of almost 3 million now, where I give mostly dating and relationship advice. Um, started that about three years ago. And then, Todd, I'll let you speak a little bit about yourself. Sure. My name is Todd Kennedy, and I'm a psychotherapist. I've been in private practice for 25 years. Um, I also have been in the unique position of being in, the, in and out of the dating market my whole adult life. So um, I've seen kind of how the dating market has shifted during my 20s to now being in my early 50s. Yeah, that is actually a really good lead in to one of our first questions and topics that we wanted to dive in with you, Kezia. Um, how do you think the dating market has changed really over the last 20 years? And what do you think men need to do differently? I think um, the funny one, it's like split in two over the last 20 years. Um, I think that... People were much more proactive. They used to be more proactive. Men used to approach women a lot more. And then came the uh, social media, but more importantly, then came the dating apps. And that really, um, that stopped, that was like a really good excuse for guys to not have to approach anymore. A lot of people were just very reliant on the dating apps. I think it changed so much um, people's perspective of dating. Um, perspective of their own quality, if I may, uh, really overvalued themselves, I think, both, especially women, um, with the dating apps and social media. Um, and now I think we're on like stage two, almost like the second split, which is that people are starting to wean themselves off dating apps. I've noticed a shift since the pandemic, actually, when we were all kind of like forced to stay inside and just interact via, like we are now, just via Zoom and via apps and things. And I think people really missed that face-to-face -face human connection. And since then, what I've noticed is that guys are a lot more proactive. Um, and women are more receptive, actually. It's like, you know, when our students go and approach women, they often hear, guys never approach me anymore. Everything's done through apps. And I think it's almost like, like a massive hangover from it. The dating apps so that's what i've seen in 20 years it's gone from it's we're sort of like going back we're in a cycle we're going back to your more organic way of meeting somebody hmm. that's interesting uh perspective hopefully that's true um because as as you probably remember when the dating as first came out there's a lot of stigma attached to them it was something where like you can't meet somebody in real life. What's wrong with you? What kind of a loser are you? You know, to have to go on this app. And now it's, you know, it's almost the exact opposite where nobody's really meeting in real life. Um, because first of all, the warm environments that we typically met in before 
are kind of absent are gone, especially, you know, after you get done with university. Um, and the workplace is not an ideal place to kind of meet people. So it's really kind of dating apps and cold approach, which is, and, and that's something that you, I mean, you, know, you almost kind of sound like a female version of a pickup artist as far as like the skills that you're teaching. Would, would that be correct? Yeah, kind of. I mean, I, I that's why originally I sort of, you know, started this was in the pickup artist community. But I left that um, probably about 2010. That's when I branched out on my own. Um, so some of the terminology that I use is a bit sort of old school pickup, just because it's easy reference, that's all. Um, but I don't teach women how to pick up men. Just help mm -hmm. Just sit there and be pretty and smile. <laughs> yeah, that's mo <laughs> mostly what women yeah. need to do. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh -huh. Because as, as I always teach, like male attraction and female attraction are very different. Female attraction is much more multi-layered and complex. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, when I see women and they're trying all this stuff with a guy, like trying to be his match, trying to be just as smart as him, talk about politics, I'm like, you just need to put on a pretty dress, it'll really work. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel about uh, nowadays, like Emily and I've had this discussion that choosing signals from a woman is very important. And one of her contentions is that women just don't know how to do that anymore comparatively to maybe our generation. Do you think mm -hmm. that's a thing? Yeah, I hold the belief that especially women that are Gen Z, they're not very good at putting out the signals to men. And I think it's also in combination with kind of the social atmosphere right now and men being a bit more fearful of doing the wrong thing and being labeled a creep. So he's looking for those signals. But it's that combination of he really needs a clear signal and she's kind of bad at even giving semi-clear signals. And so that's where the mismatch can, can occur. What do you think of that? Do you think that's happening? It's happening, but I think it runs deeper than just saying they don't know how to flirt or you know, show indicates of interest. I think that, um, and I know I'm going to sound like really old here, but Gen Z, you know, the, the, the young, young generation are, just socially really awkward. I mean, if they've been in front of screens and that's how they're interacting mm -hmm. even with like their friends most of the time. Their social skills are, are you know, borderline autistic sometimes. I'm not saying they have autism, they're on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I have, I, I know very young people and I can see how they're into and, and you know, like when we were all young, we were a little bit awkward, a little bit shy. But after a while we got going and it was okay. We knew how to communicate for heaven's sake. I think that now they just they just can't communicate unless it's via text um, or it's through an emoji or for a meme or something. And I think that that's so it runs quite deep. I wouldn't necessarily say it's girls are being more standoffish or anything like that. I don't think it's that. I just feel that they just really don't have a clue how to communicate. Mm -hmm. Make a good point. I think that's that's definitely true. I think that is true. I mean, I also think that's why Gen Zers tend to still use dating apps quite a bit. Like, I, I think that the ones are the ones that are branching out, I think, are millennials because there's still right. a little bit of that stigma. And that's the generation I'm in. Like, I know that when I was thrown back in the dating world, there was still that stigma of meeting on a dating app. You know, the big line was always like, let's meet and then pretend that we didn't meet here, mm -hmm. you know, and just yeah. start dating. Yeah. May I ask how old you are? 37. Okay. So yeah, you, you're younger. I'm 42. So we're not a million miles apart, but mm -hmm. just enough for me to be sort of like still that person who looks at dating apps and thinks, lonely sad right. i can't get it i can't get out my head and i've had young people try and say look it's you kezia that sees <laughs> this we don't and i'm like i know but it's a mental block mm -hmm. it just screams i'm lonely mm -hmm. and i and i always think like when i look at dating apps because i have been on them but i just deleted them like within a, a week i just said i can't do this i feel like physically ill doing this but it always reminded me of like going into like a dog's home you know like a rescue dog home 
And you know, like every, you know, when you walk in there, it's like all the dogs, they push their face up to the cage. It's like, pick me, pick me. I'm the cutest dog. Mm -hmm. Take me home with you. That's what I just felt like it was. Like everyone likes posing and smiling with their, you know, bios, like saying the funniest thing. I was just like, oh, this is, this feels awful. It feels like walking into like a dog rescue home. Mm -hmm. You know, (laughs) honestly, it's a terrible block, but you know, I do still actually help my students with it. A lot of them are very determined to still meet women through dating apps. But most of my students actually have just said, look, I am done. Mm-hmm. You know, like me, they try to just can't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that like I've heard from a lot of men that they would tend to agree with that. They're they're done with dating apps and they would rather meet somebody in the real world. So I think that there is a large portion of guys where some of this advice that you give would be helpful, you know, to for them to meet a woman in the real world. My mm-hmm. question is, how how likely do you think, because of what Todd said, with the warm environments really on the decline, do you think that there's a way to increase that amount of warm environment that's available to men, and that should be sort of their way? Or are you teaching more of the cold approach, where you know they don't know each other, they've never seen each other, and it's just a man seeing a woman that he's interested in and approaches her right off the bat? Why not do both? You know, one doesn't cancel out the other. Mm-hmm. I know through most of my experience, most of my boyfriends, I think I'm just, have, mm, I'd say 50% actually a cold approach. And they are always the most exciting ones. They're the ones like, you know, you want to go run and tell your friends, this guy approached me in the park. You know, he just came around to me and spoke to me and now we're going on a date. And this is crazy. So, um, you know, like I said, one doesn't cancel the other one. I think it's really important. I think it's super important to learn how to cold approach because you've got some control over that. In terms of like building up a social circle, it's a lot more effort. There's a lot more, you know, variables there. You know, if you just have this one skill and you see this this beautiful girl and you can just approach her in any situation, I think that, that that's more valuable. Mm-hmm. So... You, I, I've, I've seen a lot of your videos, and uh, you're a big proponent of game, correct? Yes, massively. Yeah. Okay. I, I think and it, so, it, if 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 you had to say in 2023, which is more important from a guy's perspective, would it be looks or game? What would you say? From a guy's perspective, like what's more important for a man yes. in order to attract women? Yes. It's it's the same as it always has been. It's the same, which is for men, looks is important. Um, but he will not get a woman to be attracted to him on with looks alone. Where uh, game will still always top looks. Um, looks provide an opportunity; they provide opportunities for you. But if you don't have game, then they're just wasted opportunities. They're missed opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, women, for instance, there's, there's three things that most guys are looking for, and I call this in the initial stages of the attraction, or the selection stage. There's three things that most men are looking for, which is how attractive she is physically, her availability, and how compliant she is. Three things that they're looking for. Now, I'm not talking about a relationship here, obviously. I'm looking for you know multiple things when it comes to settling down with a woman. So what's interesting is that a woman's beauty can eclipse all her defaults so even if you know she's stupid uh, she's got you know nothing she's a you know she's a bit bitchy whatever it is that the guy doesn't like if she's beautiful enough that will eclipse the defaults now with a man it doesn't work his looks cannot eclipse major defaults that's a big difference hmm interesting i i'm wondering though for example if this was a super unattractive guy, let's say he was an old, short, fat, bald guy or something like that, how would he be able to use utilize game if she doesn't even give him the time of day because of the fact that she's fundamentally unattracted to him? Well, it's still the opposite of what you're saying. You're saying, you know, kind of looks get you in the door and then game is what seals the deal, correct? But if... Uh, so, not exactly. So... so- Good looking guys will have more opportunities. It doesn't mean that the unattractive guy has no opportunity. He just has to create those opportunities and it's harder for him to create the opportunities. It doesn't mean that he hasn't got opportunities at all. It's just one's 
a lot. Like, you know, a lot of the guys that I, I help are in that category, you know, short or whatever, not physically really appealing to women. So I've been doing this for a long time and I've seen them, you know, open a woman and they, they have had to use um, not more game, a little bit more game than the good looking guy. But even the good looking guy, he has to use, you have to remember, you have to appreciate that a lot of the guys who come to us, and you can see this from my video testimonials, are good looking guys. The looks were not enough for them. But just going back to your, your point, so an, un, an unattractive guy, of course he has to make more effort. He has to, you know, it would be, you know, I would be a liar if I said, no, it's okay, you know, women don't care about looks at all, it's fine. You just, you know, just be cool with her, it's fine. Mm -hmm. no, he's got to really run some awesome game. The, mm -hmm. the less attractive he is, the more game he has to run, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I agree in some aspects. Like, I think that a less attractive guy will need to probably approach more often, right? Like, he needs to no. have more opportunities to have greater success. Or do you think that the success rate is the same between an unattractive guy versus an attractive guy? approaching That's what, I don't think it's a numbers game I think numbers game is okay I, I understand the, the theory behind it but I think it's more important that the guy is practicing good game so it's not just okay I'm an unattractive guy it's about um, you know approaching as many women as possible until one turns around and says yes he's got to master his craft he's got to master the art of game he's got to work on that rather than just saying, I'm just going to, you know, eventually one will say yes. So you don't think that when it comes to women's standards that they've gone up over time? As, as far I as... I think they have. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So I would think that that would play into game. And especially, you know, we're seeing all these gym videos, for example, of guys even glancing in a woman's direction who is unattractive and she labels him a creep. So how's that guy going to go up and talk to a woman if he just even glances at her and, you know, sh she's appalled by that? Okay, so there's a couple of questions there. I'll start with the mm -hmm. first one, which okay. is, um, yes, I mean, women and men, uh, women more have an inflated idea of their value now. Um, I know that sounds quite derogative and I didn't, I don't mean it to sound like that, but you know, it, again, going back to the dating apps, everybody is very replaceable now. You know, beautiful woman, doesn't matter. She can be replaced by another beautiful woman. So this is from the guy's perspective. And I, I, I do think that people are forgetting that nobody's looking like these photographs. I mean, it's like a tiny, small percentage of people actually look like their photographs. I mean, do you remember a time when you used to show a photograph uh, of like a friend, maybe, or something that you're trying to set them up? together with someone and you'd always have to say look it's a bad photo <laughs> it's a bad photo i <laughs> promise you they look better than this now you yeah. have to say look they don't look like that you know it's had a filter <laughs> big change you know yeah. right um, more for women than for guys i would say but i hear what you're saying so um yeah i mean it, look women are always going to be fussy though this is the thing like men often look at women and think you know get real, you're a four, you know, you should be happy with what you get. But again, it's going back to the fact that they're looking through attraction through a male lens. Women are, women's attraction is more multi-layered, much more complex, much more complicated. And a woman would rather be on her own with her 10 cats <laughs> than with a loser. When I say loser, that's in her head, okay? I'm not saying mm -hmm. there's a particular person that is a loser. So women will not settle. Women will not settle, and the men can get as angry as they want about it. They can say, yeah, but she's obese, but she's this. Who does she think she is? doesn't matter. Women will not go with a guy that they're not attracted to. And it's, 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 um, it's, it's not because they believe that – it's not even because they believe that they're better. It's just women Women are just not programmed to just settle with some guy that they're not really attracted to. Mm -hmm. So you essentially, that, that you're essentially describing hypergamy. Do you believe in that? Yes. I, um, yes, to a certain extent, yes. It, of course it exists, but. A lot I of people would I argue it doesn't. Mm -hmm. I think it's more complex than that. I think that sort of simplifies it. I think. 
there's a you know I've been wildly attracted, completely besotted with men who were definitely, if you want to you know measure it that way, earned less money than me, did not have my social value, weren't as good looking as me, but I was totally crazy for them, and I have also dated someone from you know the the, the British aristocracy. I was punching way above my weight with this guy. And I just, at some point, didn't fancy him anymore. And everyone said, you're crazy, you know, this is the so-and-so, I can't mention his name. You know, this is it, you've done it, Kezia. And I was like, I'm not attracted to him. I'm not, I'm just not anymore. I was, now I'm not, you know. And so I, I think it's much more complex. I know so many women and they've fallen for guys and you just look and think, well, why? Why have you fallen for him? He's got nothing, he's a bum, or he's this, or he's that, or... You just go, oh, it's because it's just the way he makes me feel. And that's very important to women is how the man makes her feel. So a lot of uh, the dating advice out there right now by certain movements within the kind of men's help community, it's very much saying to guys, look, just, you know, work on yourself, go to the gym, um, work on your career and the women will follow. That, that, does, no, 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 that, that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Now, doing those things, going to the gym, working on your career are good. It's positive action. That's going to, again, create more opportunities and it's going to make a more attractive version of yourself, of course. But if you don't understand game, if you don't understand how women tick, if you don't know how to watch chess moves to make, then, it's a, again, it's a wasted opportunity. Hmm. I agree that especially like once you're in a relationship that women's attraction works very differently than men's attraction. And it is more based, I think, on how she feels with that man, how that main man makes her feel about herself. Because I've seen time and time again where, you know, maybe they started off in the relationship very young and they were both kind of a, what we would call a looks match. And then they're in that relationship and 10 years down the line, you know, maybe he has put on 100 pounds. And if he has continued to really involve himself in the relationship and they both have that like emotional attraction, I think that translates into her physical attraction for him. I don't think that compared to a man, right, like compared to if she gained 100 pounds, I think that his attraction can waver a bit more than what hers would. So with that yeah, understanding, so- like mm-hmm. I totally, I'm there with you. I think the only thing that I question is that initial attraction. Like I do think that women need to have, it, it's like she'll look at a man and I've talked about this a few times and I think that women have like three boxes or three buckets where it's either a yes, a no, or a maybe. And I think that the maybe is like the largest bucket for women. Like I do think it's pretty broad. And that's where I think if like a man approaches that's in that maybe category, that's where game is involved, right? And that's where she's determining if she's attracted to his personality and and what he's saying and how he kind of shows up. What do you think of that? I, I agree, yes, maybe, and no. But I have dated guys who it was an immediate no when I saw them. Mm-hmm. I was so, like, no way. May I ask, like, what kind of setting was that? Was that a cold approach? Cold approach, yes. Cold approach. Um, you see, it's much easier if you're doing it, as you guys call it, a warm environment because you can use slow burners. Right. Mm-hmm. Use a slow burner. But a few times, yeah, it's been like immediately I, I was just like, no, thank you. One of the guys that works for me, one of the instructors, not a good looking guy, um, by his own admission also, he's not physically good looking. And he went and approached a woman and it was on a rooftop bar and she was a Russian woman, absolutely punching above his weight he was. And she, uh, the first thing she said to him when he approached her was, F off. That's what she said it. Cold as ice, F off. Mm-hmm. Now, he had two choices there. He had a few choices. Now, he knows about how to come back to and turn a negative into a positive. That's like we teach our students. Like, whatever she says, you can spin it around and you might have a shot of, of getting in there. And he turned around and he said to her, brilliant. I love bitchy women. I am sick of all <laughs> these nice girls. And she, she smiled. She then smiled. He goes, no, no, no. Don't you dare ruin this moment and be a nice girl. So he completely took control of the frame. That's very important. 
something I show my students is what to do if the girl says F off or what the girl says, I'm just here with my friends. Or what if the girl says, hey, what are you looking at? I know exactly what to say. I know which chess move to make in order to turn that negative situation into a positive outcome. Now, it doesn't always work. Okay, it doesn't always work. Girl can say F off to you and you've used this fantastic comeback line and everyone else thinks it's funny and she still doesn't find it funny. Okay, but you gave it a shot. It was good practice. You gave it a shot and you left with dignity. Okay, you didn't. So I'll give an example. Something that I teach my students to do is if you approach a woman and she says, no, no, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. Thanks. Okay. She's not rude. She's just, you know, not, she doesn't want you to waste your time. Always say, no problem. I just wanted to come over and say, I think you're absolutely stunning. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. And you take your time with this and you, you do it with almost regal confidence. Don't rush it. Regal confidence. And what happens is three things can happen here. Well, first of all, you elevate your mood. So most guys respond with either what we call um, low-level low anger, which is frustration. You know, it's like, hmm, you know, fine, you know, I'm just coming over to say hello. Something like this. Sometimes they can be a bit more aggressive than that. Or they respond with shame. Okay, sorry. They're looking around, they're a bit embarrassed. So you... The guy would have broken a pattern straight away here. He's responded in a way that she didn't expect. And he got the he used that moment to communicate his high value, his confidence. But more importantly, he broke a pattern. And that, that's interesting. That's when we go, hmm, hmm, that wasn't what I was kind of expecting. So his mood, at very worst case scenario, his mood is elevated, so he doesn't take that frustration, that pain to the next girl that he approaches. So it's a form of behavioral therapy almost. Mm. The second thing that can happen is the woman can have second thoughts about what she did. And I've seen this happen where the woman sort of smiles over at the man, you know, and that's her little way of saying, you know, come back and approach me. Sometimes the women actually come up to the man later and say, look, I'm sorry, you know, I was just talking to my friend there. And that's basically her opening him or reopening. And the fourth thing that we've noticed happens is there's an immediate change in her decision, immediately. So he says, have a wonderful evening. He's about to leave. And she just goes, hey, hold on a second. You know, sorry, you know, my name's so-and-so. And that's a good chess move. That's a really good move. Whereas a lot of guys won't, who don't understand game would never do that. They might not do that to her, have a wonderful evening. She's beautiful. She just rejected me. That's because they're triggered. They're coming from an emotional reaction. You know, it's very, if you see people play chess, the people that are playing, that are going to win is not going to be the one that's triggered and is getting angry. So it's very methodical. All the moves that I teach is extremely methodical. Um, and some can say contrived, for sure. But they do work. And when you start getting good at it and building up reference points and building confidence because of those reference points, that's when you can start applying instinct with it. And that's when you become what I consider a master seducer. Mm -hmm. So my question though, for example, with your first example would be, if a, if a woman said that, I, I, I can see where you're going with that and I can see that being effective to continue the conversation, but I would think that most guys would say, that's not a, a woman I'd want in my life if that's how she <laughs> responds. Again, maybe for a one night, or a fling or something like that, but like to have a relationship with it, I don't know. What's So what's your thoughts about, you know, something like that? So with our students, we say, it doesn't matter if she's bitchy, you carry on. So that what happens is when you know how to uh, attract the bitchy girls, the ones who give you, you know, all the with tests, I can't use swear whether, <laughs> you know, they, they test you and they mm -hmm. put up the bitch shield and all this. It's a filtering system in a lot of cases. They just want to see, look, are, you know, are you man enough for me? But maybe they are just being horrible. It doesn't matter. All I care about is that my students have the confidence to say, I can approach any woman anywhere. Now, if you already limit it and say, well, don't approach the bitchy ones, well, you don't know which one's going to be bitchy, do you? You don't know. Mm -hmm. You want to go in there and say, I can talk to any woman. If she, gives, if she says F off to me, I know what to say. Am I going to be attracted to her? No. That's not the kind of woman I like. Fair enough. Some guys like it. Most guys don't. 
Mm-hmm. But it's about creating that skill. If you're just going to go for low-hanging fruit, then your skills are not going to develop. You're going to always be that guy who's like, mm, is she available? Um, is she smiling enough? Um, and they've limited and limited their choices by doing that. I have one guy who used to work for me, doesn't work anymore. He also went and approached a woman and she said something along the line of go away. And he pursued her. He liked that kind of woman, to be fair. He pursued her. They end up in a two-year relationship. Very nice girl. Very sweet, very lovely. But she was one of those kind of prickly people. She was just prickly and hard to love. But, you know, once you've got past it, she was actually a very sweet girl. That's not the case all the time. But, you know, you never know. You never know. People can have off days, bad days. But the point of what I'm trying to, the message I'm trying to get across here is that you, it doesn't matter if you're attracted to that or not. It's just about learning game and getting your skill to go as you know, high as possible so that when you do see like an easy target, sorry about my expressions. I know some people find it easier. It's just easier for me. And we have, easy we have target, 95% guy audience. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, go ahead. Proceed. No, no. It's just, that, that's ba- I basically, that, that's what I want to say. It's just if you want to go for low-hanging fruit, then, you know, you're never going your your skill set is just never going to evolve. Yeah, I can see that like having game in a way where it's really like your mindset, you know, in the example that you were describing, it not hurting your feelings, you know, when a woman is quickly rejecting you and not reacting off of that and instead really having that true mindset of like no big deal you know, okay, this is what I was trying to do. I was just trying to say, hey, and it's because I think she's beautiful. So I'm just going to let her know that. Have a nice night. Like, I do think that if men truly are taking in that mindset, I think that's a huge positive. Because what that does is that man can probably approach more women, right? Like, even if he does end up not succeeding in that specific scenario, he can still have the mindset, that positive mindset to still try again. And what do you recommend for men that like are trying to do the cold approach and they get a lot of rejection? Do you think that they need to like work on the mindset first or do they just need to work on the skills or do you think it's all of the above? So what we do is we work on, on it, they're hand in hand. You can't just work on in a game um, alone and then help them with the skills. I mean, there's some people that come to us, they're more confident in themselves than others. Something we always say is like a lot of our students come to us and they say, oh, you know, I'm not confident. And then we find out they're confident in lots of areas of their life. They're actually a confident person. They're just not confident talking to women because it's a skill set. They haven't been taught it. They don't know how to do it. When you know how to do something, you're confident, right? That's a very important message that I give our students. But they have to learn the lines. They have to learn what to say next. They have to learn how to build up a conversation. They they need to know this stuff because what happens is if they overcome the approach anxiety, if they finally overcome it and say, right, I can approach a woman now. I'm not outcome dependent. I'm not scared of rejection. And then she like gives him that chance because, you know, he's really confident now. He's he's worked on that opening line. And then it's like conversation just fizzles out. What will happen is that will just refuel the approach anxiety again. He's already thinking about, I'm going to run out of things to say. So it's very important for guys to work on what we call the transition stage, which is between um, the approach and full-blown comfort, we call it, a full-blown conversation. It's that transition point where most guys fall apart like a a cheap suit. They get the approach, they nail it, and it's like, oh, so what do you do? And it goes back to being a very anodyne, very boring kind of conversation. So we definitely, we, we work a lot on the conversation skills and just showing them how to not run out of things to say and have a very impactful, dynamic interaction with the woman. And once they know how to do that, so they're already sort of leaping, they're already leaping onto like the third part what, or the second part. Once they know that, we find that the approach isn't such a big issue for them because they already know what to do next, if that makes sense. And what happens also is the more positive reference points they get, the more that um, fuels their confidence and in turn builds more reference points. So it becomes like a positive feedback loop. But I definitely think by just sitting down with a guy and, you know, telling him it's okay, you're great, and trying to change his perspective in the situation, 
it helps some people, but the majority, I think, of men need to go out there and say, I need to, I need to feel the burn, I need to feel the pain, I need to feel rejection, mm-hmm. I need to feel that, and numb myself to it, literally mm-hmm. numb yourself to it, and then start putting into practice these, these lines, these skills, these techniques. Because when you become numb to it, the thing is, when guys go in there with fear and anxiety, it's like there's a fog in their mind. They can't think clearly. They can't remember lines that you've given that they can't they're just like because they've got this fear. But once you become almost immune to the pain and to the fear, you start you start seeing things more clearly. You start looking at it um, in a more detached way, which is a good thing. You start becoming detached with it. You're not emotionally anchored into that moment. You know, you're playing chess again. It's like right, okay. So she said that. I'm going to use this. So you get clarity. Does make a lot of sense. So, what's your perspective as far as is it just kind of wherever you see a woman, or is there better spots than others? For example, yeah, I mean, look, there's places to meet women where you're going to get more of a selection. Like, for instance, in the park is a great one because you know who's in a rush when they go to the park. You know, sometimes when they're walking in the street and they're walking very quickly, they have to get somewhere. We call them moving targets. That's the <laughs> hardest one. That's the yeah. hardest uh-huh. one. To yeah. stop. You've got to raise your energy. You've got to go and direct. You can't do it indirect. Oh, excuse me. Where's the nearest Starbucks? She's like, F off. I've got to get somewhere. <laughs> <mate."> <laughs> You've got to go in there with that same energy level. It's like, stop. I know you're in your rush. I don't care. I'm in love with you. You know, it's got to be like, so <laughs> ridiculous and big that makes people go, huh? You've got to love bomb them or something or something crazy because you have to match that energy. But if she's like walking her dog in the park or she's having an ice cream, enjoying the sunshine, I mean, that's. That's a sitting target that's easy, okay? She's not in a rush to go anyway, so she's not going to have to use that as an excuse, right? Like, you know, if I get chatted up in the street, I'm always like, look, I'm sorry I'm in a rush. I've got to go somewhere, okay? If I'm in the park, I can't say I'm in a rush. I, I can't use that as an excuse. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting down having an ice cream, you know? <laughs> like, I'm not in a rush to go anywhere. Coffee shops, um, shopping malls. Um, I love, like, sort of art and cultural areas. We've got loads of them in London, they're fantastic places to meet women. Um, yeah, I mean, look, for us, we say any, anywhere, anywhere you approach her. If you see a woman that you're attracted to, approach her. You only don't approach her if your life's in danger, you know, something like that. You know, God, what, I don't know what on earth <laughs> circumstances would entail for that to happen. But mm-hmm. So, and essentially, it is kind of a numbers game then, if you have that mentality, correct? As far as saying, well, ev- anytime I'm anywhere if i see an attractive woman i'm going to make that move that's not numbers game though is it i mean for us okay maybe we did a bit of uh, miscommunication here because for us numbers gaming mean it's just sort of approach 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 any girl kind of thing like that's yeah no, I, I yeah i hear mm. i i understand what you're saying as far as the discrepancy uh, yeah i'm saying that if you're attracted to somebody that essentially you should have that mindset whenever you leave the house that you're going to approach uh, if you're attracted to her, no matter what the setting is. You can allow yourself off days. You can, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's about your mood also. It is about your mood. So if your mood, if you've got low level mood that day, and you're like, I just cannot get myself out of it. Probably not the best day to approach. Or if you are going to approach, you've got to go indirect, not go direct, go to easy targets, you know, but, um, yeah, I, I do believe, uh, look, I'm, I'm just in this world, okay, and I've seen my students and I've seen the guys who work for me and my own personal experience is of guys approaching a woman and it ending up, most of the time, nothing. But some of those times have been really, really precious relationships, you know, we've had. And it just, imagine, you know, you, you never know. You really never know. That girl you're talking to in Starbucks Probably, no, it's not going to go anywhere. You can get a number, you've got a date, you're going to end up being the love of your life. But there's a chance it might be. And I have honestly seen this and I've experienced it. I've been in an eight-month relationship with someone who cold approached me in the park. I was in an, And it happened twice in the park, by the way. Mm-hmm. So I was in a relationship with two guys. 
as yeah. a result of them. Because you know why I was in the park? It was during, it's when things in England were sort of like, not locked down, but opening up a little bit, but a lot of places were closed. Everyone was just going to the parks, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's why they were in the park. So you teach game to include sort of like, uh, like body posture and tone of voice. Because that is interesting to me. I do think that like female attraction, there is that component, like not only how you look, but if we're talking about off dating apps, you are in a cold approach and warm approach, of course, getting those other aspects. And I think that women are taking all of that in. I, I do think that an argument could be made for the dating apps, you know, that there is more weight being given to looks yes. in that case. And I don't know. Do you, do you give advice for men on dating apps too, as far as having game on a dating app? Yeah, I mean, I look at their text mess uh, their messages that they're they're giving, uh, you know, sending girls on the dating apps, and I help them with that. Um, just generic stuff gets yeah. a bit needy, or they get the balance wrong. They're either too aloof, or they're too needy. They never get it quite right. I'm just about setting up the date. Um, just lots of little tricks that we give. Like we, we use the, the anti-cell actually on dating apps. So it's like, um, so I did an experiment when I was on the dating app. I put um, dating with me is really boring. What do I want to be? I want to be a bum when I'm older. Really like I'm selling my, like really like painting a bad picture of myself. And I got a lot, a lot of people connecting on that. They thought it was funny. It's not try hard. Person doesn't get it. So we actually... With some of our students, we put things like, you know, I'd be the worst boyfriend, you know, stuff like that. And it's quite funny because whilst everybody else is trying to sell themselves so badly, again, going back to the rescue dog thing, mm -hmm. everyone else is trying to sell themselves so badly. You need to stick out. You need to stand out. And, you know, you're, you're, you're using the anti-cell. It's like, no, you shouldn't be using anti-cell. It's like, yes, you should sometimes. It works. It can work. Yeah. That's for guys who are like really struggling, like I'm not getting anywhere with this. It's like, okay, so we've got to do something different here. We can't be doing what everyone else is doing because it's not working for you. So we're going to try this. A lot of the time, it, they get much better feedback because, you know, for, for women, it's very important. Humor, character. We don't like needy, desperate guys. That like really turns off women. So a woman can be quite needy and pick me, pick me on her dating app. And guys don't mind just looking at the body and, and that's it you know she's hot she can be as needy as she wants doesn't matter i still want to bang her mm -hmm. women are just like oh my god he's too needy no you see it's completely different again a woman's looks can eclipse all her other defaults man cannot rely on looks alone yeah well and i would i would argue though except for on a dating app because a lot of times i've seen women swipe and, you know, Emily, I've had, had many conversations about this, that if they're not attracted, they're not even going to read the bio because they're swiping so quickly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's yeah. just, it's not, it's, it's, it's something that we tell it. our audience to just get off of them yeah. because, it, you know. 100% with you. Okay. 100%. 100%. Look, I have a customer, you know, most of them that come to me, you know, that are on the dating apps, it's like they're doing a bit well, but not very well. It's they're kind of like, but yeah, most of the guys who I would say are physically unattractive, like very unattractive, they don't even bother with the dating apps. They've kind of realized it quite quickly. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Um, but yeah, of course, if you're not if you're not a good looking person and the filters aren't going to help, yeah, you've got to get off them straight away, and you've got to communicate that character, that that body language. Um, you know, this is another reason why I don't use dating apps because um, for me, like, so many times I've met a guy in a bar or something, and it's not the way he looked. When he walked in the room, I wasn't really that interested. He wasn't my type, but it was just the way that he operated the room, the way he handled himself, the way he handled me, his body language, his eye contact, the way he spoke to, like, the barman, just something. You just go, hmm, you know. Women have it too. You know, women have sex appeal. A lot of men, you know, a man had to explain it to me the other day. He was like, there's pretty girls and there's hot girls. I was like, mm, what's the difference? He goes, oh, everything, everything. Mm -hmm. And women have the same thing. There are good looking guys and then there are other hot guys. That are, we call it attractive guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Going back to the locations that you were going over for men to cold approach, I was thinking about how like a lot of men, I think their concern is figuring out if she's even available 
right? Like they don't want to end up approaching, of course, the married woman. And that's a little bit more obvious because she should be wearing a ring. Um, but even then, so, you know, it could just be somebody that already has a boyfriend. So he's potentially fearful of that. And maybe he, you could argue that he's overthinking it, you know, and that you can just respond kindly if you get rejected by her because she uses the boyfriend line. Um, but I think the other concern is, is just the atmosphere that we're in right now as far as his concern with being labeled a, a certain way, like especially the word creep, right? That's what mm -hmm. we've been hearing a lot of. And some of that might be heightened because of social media and because of how some women are speaking and how they are almost insulted when they find a guy that they think is way below them. I know that's an awful way to say it, but as far as in looks, if she considers him below her so much so that she is insulted by him approaching, how do you recommend guys just kind of, I guess, resolving that mindset? If And if you even think that's true, you know, if women actually will label a guy a creep that way, or do you think that's sort of just made up and spread as lies? <laughs> I think it's fairly made up, actually. We have thousands of students and none of them been called creep. They've been rejected, sure. No, thank you. But we haven't ever had a, who do you think you are? Or, How dare you approach me? Never. Not once. 16 years, never seen it. Um, I think a lot of this is kind of like the media pushing this kind of idea, this agenda, you know, like women don't want to be approached. It's like, I have not seen any evidence of that. I've not, and I'm, I haven't, I'm sure it's out there. None of my students have ever encountered this. Um, yeah, creep is the thing that they're scared of being called the most, okay? So the way to overcome that is to, you, you wanna, first of all, first thing that you said is, no, a guy should approach, again, unless he's in some potential danger, dangerous situation, then he should approach any woman that he wants to approach. And let's say she has a boyfriend or a husband, or she's she's three months pregnant, he couldn't tell, whatever it is. <laughs> what has he wasted? Okay, you got a girlfriend. Right. She says, I've got a girlfriend, by the way. She just say, well, oh, I've got a goldfish. Anyway, what were we saying? You know, you can make a joke about it or something. But, you know, worst case scenario, let's say you should, no, no, I'm married. Oh, wow, big whoop, you know, you mid 30 seconds, you've got a bit of practice in there at least, you know, it's a bit of practice. Well, that's the, the big thing that, that guys are worried about. Shouldn't be. And the creep thing, that's be, that's being used slightly as an excuse to not approach, I think, okay, by some guys. Um, not all. I think some of them genuinely are very worried about that, but they sort of like talk themselves into it. Oh, you know, I don't want to be called a creep. I'm too fragile for that. It will destroy my confidence. Um, so I'm not going to approach women, you know, so it becomes like a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't know if sure, sure that's the right expression. Yeah, uh, well, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one of the things yeah. I've always taught the guys that I've worked with as far as approaching is if in the rare event, because I, I agree with you, Kezia, that most women are not going to, you know, say something that is going to be extremely rude. Um, they're just going to give you, you know, what would be a soft rejection. Usually it's the boyfriend line, yeah. but if they did, that's, that says something about them versus about you. And to look had to have that mindset that if somebody said something outrageous and you were just being uh, assertive and being a, a gentleman and, you know, saying, hey, I'm interested in you, and they snap back with something like that, then instead of internalizing that and saying, what's wrong with me, you should say, what's wrong with her? Does that make sense? No. Yeah. Yeah, it makes perfect sense, but I would... Yeah, I mean, you've got to, I always say to my students, have a list of what you find attractive in a woman and be prepared to, and be be confident enough to use a filtering system. You know, see if she's ticking your box, your boxes. That's very, very important. However, it goes back to the good looks again. She's very, very beautiful. The box, you know, all those boxes come out the window. <laughs> this is the problem. Yeah. The one problem with guys, women can keep that, you know, their boxes more. <laughs> Men, it's like, oh, she's too beautiful. I'm dazzled by her. So it doesn't matter if she says this or that. I just want to continue. So, um, yeah, it's very important that guys go in that mindset going, mm, you know what, I I don't like that behavior, actually. I'm not attracted to that. But at the same time, I think that you, you, can, you can go, this is a bit out there, but I have 
we have got our students to do this, but you you can actually sort of own it a bit. Um, it doesn't sound really out there. But we have had a couple of students do this where, you know, if the girl says something really bad, the guy kind of like owns it even more. Like she, We haven't had creep though, that's the thing. But we've had, for instance, like, oh, you know, you just say that, to, you know, you're just trying to chat me up or something. You're just trying to chat me up. It's probably the worst thing we've had. It's like, of course I'm trying to chat you up. You're, you know, you're effing beautiful. Mm-hmm. Why is, you know, is no one else chatting you up? Is it just Is it just me that finds you attractive? So you kind of like almost own it. So I would say if someone... Worst case, said you're a creep. Yeah, you can turn around and say, you know what, that's not my kind of person anyway. So goodbye. You can do that. If you genuinely, genuinely feel that, fine. But you can also say, yeah, I'm, I'm a massive creep. Like, I literally, I have like a van parked in the woods. <laughs> you, know, you, you go to the point where it's ridiculous. That's how creepy you are. You're really the creepiest guy in the world. You know, <laughs> I'm a people Tom. And that's, you really own it, you know, you take it to that extreme. And the worst thing that can happen is if you take it to the extreme, the girl just goes, oh, and walks off. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's like, she can't top it. She can't say anything. Yeah. Or she turns around and laughs. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, this guy's cool, actually. Uh, my bad, I'm sorry. Uh, that's what I would do. I'm quite a ballsy, bold person. And if, you, if you're mm-hmm. quite a, naturally a bold first person, then I would suggest that guys do that. You know, go go large or go home kind of thing. Mm-hmm. 